This webinar is proudly brought to you by IG South Africa. Visit igmarkets.co.za to open your trading account today. Afternoon, ladies and gents. Uh, Simon Brown here, uh, doing introduction for Warren Peacock uh, from the tradersplace.co.za. Brilliant, fast fingers everywhere, hands galore. We are winning. Uh, so, as always, Warren will do the presentation. We we'll certainly take questions thereafter, uh, and the video will be up uh, late today, maybe early tomorrow morning. Uh, but with that, I'll hand over to Warren. Good afternoon. Thank you, Simon. Uh, welcome, everyone. Today we're going to be having a look at the MACD, which is short for Moving Average Convergence Divergence. And as the name suggests, it basically measures the distance between two moving averages. Uh, let's get the slide. I don't know why this is so slow now. There we go. All right, so what is a MACD? It's a longer term momentum type indicator that measures the difference between two moving averages. So basically it's telling us by design whether the two moving averages are moving apart or moving closer together or whether they've crossed over. The default setting on a MACD is a 12 and 26 EMA with a nine period exponential moving average of that MACD itself and that is known as the signal line. Bottom line is a MACD can be constructed using any two exponential moving averages. So uh, yeah, I use the standard 1226, but if you wanted to see how your particular chart is doing on a momentum basis, you could change the MACD to the two moving averages that you particularly look at. So you could have a 100 versus a 200 MACD, uh, or 21 versus 89, or however you want to set it up. As long as you understand the MACD and what it's measuring, you can apply any moving averages to it. It can also be used in any time frame, uh, in my experience, above 30 minutes. So you can apply these systems. I will explain during the presentation when I don't use it intraday. But from 30 minutes and above, it normally uh, gives you pretty decent results. I just find once you get to really small time frames, like a five minute chart, by the time the MACD gives you a signal, that price has already moved and you probably should be taking profit already. Uh, so the MACD is a as a slow momentum indicator. Uh, today we, I'm just going to look at four ways to include the MACD in an existing system. Uh, you could apply it on its own, but I think it's much better when we apply it to everything else we know about trading and we use the MACD as an addition to a trending system, for example. Uh, it can help us get into a trend late, so you missed the, the initial move, the MACD can get you in further up the trend. Uh, the four ways we're going to look at, I'm going to look at a simple signal line, which I'm sure most of you have read about or heard about. The MACD crosses a signal line. Uh, I only use it from an oversold position, but you can have a look at it from overbought or oversold. We're going to have a look at the slingshot, which is a fancy name for reverse divergence or hidden divergence. I'm going to take you through a zero line reversal, and that's basically where the MACD approaches zero and reverses before crossing it. And we're going to have a look at the hook trade, which is when the MACD returns to its signal line and continues in the previous direction without crossing it. Uh, so basically it is measuring momentum and we're using that measurement to give us some trade ideas. One thing to note, guys, the, the MACD will not give you a trade every day. Okay, It's one of those things that you've got to be patient, you wait for it. If you see it, you can make the trade. It is certainly not something that I would say this is all you should use uh, because they can be few and far between. Even if you are like me trading multiple markets, uh, the MACD will not give you a trade every day and probably not every week either. Uh, some of my personal preferences on, on the shares, I only use MACD for longs and I only use it end of day. For indices, I use the MACD for longs only on a daily, weekly and monthly time frame. When it comes to day trading or intraday trading the index, I'll use it long and short. So long only on end of day, but for intraday I can look at it long and short. In the forex markets, long and short any time frame above 30 minutes. Uh, commodities I also use it long and short above 30 minutes. Uh, again, you must know what your systems are supposed to produce and then use the MACD to enhance that. 
Okay, the first section, signal line trigger. The MACD goes over sold. <clears throat> now notice on this little drawing, the right-hand trough is much lower than the left-hand trough. I want the MACD to be oversold in relation to its history. Only use this trigger on end-of-day equities and indices on daily, weekly, and monthly charts. Okay, I don't use this on Forex. I don't use it intraday on indices or anything like that. Only end-of-day, daily, weekly, and monthly charts. Uh, Aspen gives us a really good example. I just used a 200 exponential moving average, dynamic support line, and we can see the price came down, touched the 200. The MACD went into an oversold level. So if you go in history, that would be the ultimate low. It didn't quite hit it, but it's good enough it went past the previous low. The MACD turned up, crosses above the signal line, I've got support on the 200 EMA. When the MACD closes above the signal line, you can take the entry. Uh, one of the questions is going to be, do I use this for CFDs or single stock futures, or do I use it on the physicals? Uh, you can use it either way. On the physicals, you would obviously be looking for an add into the trend. If you are trading with leverage, you would just be looking to catch the short momentum move that normally occurs after the MACD crosses its signal line from an oversold position. Uh, your stop losses, you'd have to apply your normal stop loss rules. Position management, same goes. Uh, it is just an indicator that can give us some extra trades that we would otherwise uh, not take. The slingshot or reverse divergence. It's a reasonably rare pattern. You don't see it often. Um, even on the intraday charts, it's not often that you'll see the price makes a higher low. So we've got the price making the higher low over there, and the MACD makes a lower low. Uh, you don't see that too often. But when it happens, it's often a pretty decent trade. On the bearish side, we've got price making a lower high over there, and we've got the MACD making the higher high. It basically is showing us that the share is not confirming the MACD momentum. I remember it's a mathematical formula that makes up the indicator, but the idea would be that price will probably lead uh, in this example. If we look at normal divergence, it's going to be the other way around where the price is making the lower low and the indicator is making the higher low, showing that momentum is not following through. Okay, so this is just the opposite. <clears throat> and like I said, it's pretty rare. MTN was the best example. Uh, we had the 2008 correction. The market started to pull back, topped out the middle of, you know, sort of third quarter 2009. MTN then pulled back, made a higher low. The MACD made a lower low. We have reverse divergence or a slingshot trade, and we can see the result. Remember, it's a monthly chart. Uh, since then, MTN has just continued to rise. The longer the time frame, obviously, the longer the trade would be expected to continue. So when it comes to MTN, this was a really good trade. It picked the bottom, but two years later. All right, so remember what I said. It's a slow indicator, especially on the monthly chart, but that was a really nice place to be looking at MTN. On the hook trade, uh, these ones come around a little bit more often. They can be quite difficult to to see as they're occurring, but uh, how it works is when the MACD returns to just kiss the signal line soon after the previous cross. Uh, so in my little picture at the bottom, we've got the initial MACD crossing the signal line. The MACD then moves higher. It pulls back and just touches the moving average. Okay, that would be called a hook trade. I want it to occur below zero for the longs and above zero for the shorts. In other words, if it's yeah, if the MACD is just messing around here at the zero line and I get a, a hook trade, I'm not really interested. I would like the MACD to have been quite low before looking at the long. Anglo-American gave us a, a good trade on this one. Again, I just used the uh, 200 exponential moving average. We have Anglo's making a higher low. We've got support on the 200. 
the MACD comes down, just kisses its moving average over there, and we have ourselves a hook trade. And as I said earlier, the slingshot is quite rare, but here's another really good example of the MACD giving me two ideas. This low is lower than that low. I have the slingshot, breaks up, maybe I missed the slingshot, price comes back, kisses the moving average, and we are into the momentum trade. On New Zealand dollar, US dollar, uh, just an example of a short hook. And yeah, this one you can apply across the board. You can even look on the Aussie. The problem that I have with the Aussie is this, uh, yeah, it's not a 24-hour market. The MACD then gets jerked around with the gaps in the morning. Uh, so it, I find it a little bit less reliable. And once we get below the 30-minute chart, uh, it gets even worse. So I don't really apply it on the, on the Aussie future. If you are trading with someone like IG that offers you a 24-hour market, you'd probably have better results with the Aussie there. And this was just basically New Zealand dollar, US dollar, MACD is overbought, crosses its signal line, comes back, just kisses the moving average, and we have some divergence. So we've got the MACD ticking lower, we've got the price ticking higher, and we have the trade coming through. Uh, it will require patience and you have to have stops. This doesn't work every single trade. Okay, so you still have to apply your stops as you would on any other type of trading system. Um, what I do like about a MACD, whether it's the hook trade or uh, or the slingshot, it can often pick the major turning point in the market. So in this example, New Zealand dollar versus US dollar, that's a really good move for us. The market had a strong upward momentum. When you look at that chart before the break, lower, the expectation would be a bounce from here, and we're going to get a further move up. The MACD really negated that. So I do like it at extreme points. Uh, and again, on, on the longs, got a support level, and we have a potential for a, another hook trade on the MACD over there. So keep your eyes on that one if you are a Forex trader. Zero line reversals. Ah, I quite enjoy this one. Is when the MACD approaches zero and then reverses. So we've got the MACD, crosses up, comes down, just tips the zero line, and continues in its previous direction. All that's happened is the 12 and 26 exponential moving averages have come together and touched each other. So anybody who's used moving averages will understand what I'm talking about. Uh, and some people will use that as a trading opportunity. The MACD tells me exactly that without having to look at the moving averages. Uh, this was a really nice trade on gold. Uh, we're going back here, I think it's back to 2012. The gold price started to drop off. The trend remained up. Price came a little bit higher over there, trying to make a higher high. Failed to hold on. The MACD just tipped above the zero line. Okay, my rule is simple, less than five candles. Less than five candles is what the MACD must spend above zero in this example before I would consider shorting it. So if I have six days where the price, sorry, where the MACD stays above zero, I won't be trading that as a zero line reversal. The MACD must also stay very close to the zero line. What I do prefer is that the trend has changed over here. We've just got the two averages crossed. Trend is now considered down. Overall momentum is considered down. The MACD comes back, kisses the zero line at the same place the price comes back and hits the 89 exponential moving average. That can just give, give you added confirmation. And again, the price came back, attempted to hit the 89, didn't break above it. The MACD is again at the zero line. Awesome trading opportunity. And then, just for good luck, we got another trade. This time, the 21 is holding up the price. The MACD hits the zero line, or just short of it. Okay, that would be considered a zero line reversal. Uh, you can build your own sort of rules as to how far away it must be. But I, I don't want to see too much daylight between the MACD and the zero line. Uh, the other thing is the trade would be confirmed when the MACD actually closes below its, its trigger line. 
So the blue line crosses the trigger line, it closes below there for that day, that would confirm the trade. Now remember, uh, this is gold at about $1,300, it did close, uh, sorry, it did bottom out at about 1100 11, so it was a really good idea from the MACD on this particular trade. Uh, here's a, a little gift for you guys to watch going forward. Uh, Baller World has completed the head and shoulders. The red zigzag, so we've got left shoulder, head, right shoulder. The black line is the neckline. Our MACD has given us firstly a warning. We have negative divergence. Price made a higher high, MACD made a lower high. It's not a trade, it's just a warning. Then we have the formation of the right shoulder and the MACD is at the zero line. It has now crossed lower. Price is still above the neckline, a little bit unfortunate, but should price now break below the neckline, I have the MACD confirming and I have the neckline break with the Boiler World head and shoulders. This does take patience to let it work out. Um, just an example would be that if if I was going to go short Baller World on this basis, I could just put a stop loss above the right hand shoulder, calculate your risk reward, and make your position size accordingly. Okay, the, the MACD is very versatile. I didn't go into divergence. Uh, that's a reasonably simple way to do it. I do find that it gives good buy signals, but really bad on the shorts. We don't want to go short in equities based on divergence. Uh, but the slingshot can be really good for shorts just not many examples out there. But try using these ideas in conjunction with your other trading ideas. It'll create extra opportunities. You can use it to confirm your bias. Yeah, if you're assuming that the, the market is going to come off and you're having a look at the, the J200, you get negative divergence on a MACD or even better, you get a nice uh, zero line reversal. That can confirm that bias. You can use these ideas on the negative side to maybe close off some long-term equities. If you get it on a weekly chart or on the really long-term on a monthly chart, uh, although I think a month monthly chart is a little bit long-term to exit physicals, but let's say a weekly chart, you get your negative divergence and you can start closing out that position. Uh, when it comes to market corrections, and I'm sure most of you have heard that the market's going to crash every single day for the last two years, it hasn't happened yet. But when it does, because it will occur at some point, the market has to correct at some point, you can use the MACD to get in on the initial trade. So from the oversold level on a weekly or a monthly chart, MACD goes to a really deep level, crosses up through the signal line, you can start accumulating some equities again. Um, the, like we saw on MTN, you might get a slingshot opportunity. Uh, what occurs quite often on a weekly chart um, and even on the daily charts at those extreme lows, you can often get yourself a, a hook trade. Uh, the downside is normally from those ultimate lows, the momentum is too great for a proper hook trade. Okay, so the MACD will go uh, start moving higher, it'll break up through zero and then it might give us a long opportunity on a zero line reversal. So when the market does correct, start looking at your MACD. Uh, and you can really use that to, to get an idea moving forward uh, as to which direction you should be in. On the commodities and the forex side, I don't really apply um, the MACD to, to short time frames. So look at it on an hourly chart. Uh, the oversold and overbought idea on MACD with the signal line doesn't work on forex and commodities intraday. Uh, you can have a look at it on the daily charts. But I think on the dailies, uh, I prefer to use the divergence ideas, so the slingshot or divergence, uh, the hook trades and the zero line reversals. Practice it. You're welcome to contact me, send me some email pictures, ask for my, uh, you know, for my opinion of what you've done. Uh, it does take time to learn the MACD, but if you do learn it, it's a very versatile indicator that can help you trade just about anything and if it doesn't work on a particular instrument you just don't use it there. All right, thank you Ash. Thanks uh, Simon. Thanks Warren. Uh, ladies and gents, I
This webinar is proudly brought to you by IG South Africa. Visit igmarkets.co.za to open your trading account today.